In the past weeks, I have had some much needed and anticipated repots to do very late in the season, but that has been the trend of the Orchid 2025 glam camping season here on the patio. My orchids are delayed in doing what they would normally do by now, have done by now as per their rhythm in the previous years. They're delayed by four to five weeks. So here are two little Catlia orchid repots coming up that were not too taxing on me. In filming these two repots, I figured that I would just give a few updates on these two as well as other random thoughts that come to mind while the repot footage rolls. Just point out a few things on the orchids as and when I see them, or in general, a patio chat in southern Spain. And here you are. I hope you stay. Welcome to the patio. It's so kind of you to spend some time with me. And speaking of, I hope you stay. Hopefully not just for this video, but take a moment to subscribe to the channel. Check out all the videos. I have seen some of you being so supportive that you have gone deep into the library of the channel and dusted off some evergreens and I truly appreciate you for that. Thank you so much. I used to post videos every day for many years because I was front loading my channel to get all that I wanted to say onto the channel, share my take and experience of growing orchids in daily videos as fast as possible because the plan was to get back to my profession after COVID had lifted all the restrictions. Well, after a couple of years of trying to get back into the hospitality industry without any success, age being the main reason, I know, right? Age. And that, and this day and age, you know, discrimination, yeah, that. Anyway, there were other reasons cited by those I interviewed with, but they made no sense. It was more an excuse, some kind of formal lip service, so to speak, <laughs> as opposed to the real reason, which was age. Oh, and of course, my ex job was not offered back to me. It was their perfect timing to cut off the heads of departments and replace with cheaper contract payments. So yeah, those of you that have found some of my old videos and have chosen to support the channel with your time and views on those videos, thank you so very much. All the support in the past years has been greatly appreciated, especially if you dig deep into the library, find the nuggets, and then comment on those nuggets and, well, your feedback has been incredible. Muchas gracias for that. Meanwhile, I am now posting one video a week publicly and for members I try to get out one video per week. That remains on members only. Unless one day I cannot post a video for the week, then I may resort to make a members video public. I don't know, I would rather not, but I am building the members library so that I can show my appreciation for the support of all the Orchid Ninjas that they give me on a monthly basis. Come winter, I will amp up the members content because I feel all warm and fuzzy when I work on content just for the members. I have had such a wonderful time getting to know you on the one-on-one -on -one private stream sessions, the correspondence and other forms of communication we have had. The monthly support is just so very kind of you. The emotional support is insanely helpful and well, the friendships, they are priceless. Thank you so much to the existing members that have been around for so, so long. I cannot thank you enough. And anyone who's not a member, please consider becoming an Orchid Ninja. This also supports me on a monthly basis, which goes towards the Save the Patio Fund. Yes, it is squirrel status. It has commenced officially. And if you would like to have something for your support in return, then know that we can hang out privately. We can chat about orchids or not, troubleshoot questions or not, or just have a casual chin wag about anything and everything amongst other perks and, well, become a member, become an orchid ninja, consider yourself welcome to the gaggle and know that your contribution on a monthly basis really, really will help and go a long way. Thank you. So I went off on a tangent there for a second. I was actually talking about older videos. Now, let me just tell you what I have been up to during my mental freezes, because you know, financial woes, panic stations, I have mental freezes, the phases during which I'm gripped by the fear of my current reality of frantically trying to save the patio. Anyway, during the mental freezes, 
those phases, I have been systematically proofreading the transcripts of my older videos to get the orchid names spelt correctly and any other weirdly spelled words because some of the speech recognition is wild and good for a laugh when you are mentally frozen, have a brain fart and, you know, the fear factor and all that. So a good laugh, sporadic, is always great for those situations. In English, they're funny, but they could be offensive when translated and everything is going to get completely lost. And with that, the credibility of the channel, myself, per se, as a side effect. So I do hope that in doing this activity, while brain freeze is persistent, I am able to polish things up for anyone reading the subtitles in different languages, enhancing their experience at the same time. I hope. It is tedious, you could say mind-numbing repetitive work, but it is exactly the kind of work I need to do regardless because it creates a better experience for anyone using subtitles. And I'm reminded about all the orchids I had, still have as well, and of course the ones that I have lost. Which have been many, never mind. Anyway, it's super interesting to go back in time and review my own videos, even with just the written word. When I say mind-numbing, <laughs> it's a great escape from reality while still being productive and proactive without having to think too much. <laughs> I had set myself a time frame for every day that I spend on proofreading transcripts because it is so easy to lose track of time when doing that kind of work. To give you an idea, at the time of posting this video, I have a total of 2,244 uploaded videos, including live streams, not all of which are public because, again, there are members only videos, but they need their transcripts checked as well. I have separated two playlists out as I go deep into the content library to pull the transcripts and I will tackle the videos in those playlists after I've been through the entire list of videos because they are easy to remember. With that being said, I started this two years ago with a plan to at least do three transcripts per day and here I am still picking away on the proofreading with possibly another 300 videos to correct. <laughs> um, I'm coming to the end of this endeavor but at least when that time comes I will feel much better that my videos are clean and acceptable for consumption when it comes to reading the subtitles in different languages. Thankfully, for the past 10 months, the channel also has the auto-dubbing feature, so all the videos since November 2024 are spoken in different languages and their transcripts were checked and proofread at the time of uploading them. But yes, I am estimating that I have approximately 300 plus minus videos left and perhaps by the end of 2025 that will have been dealt with. Crazy, huh? But you're listening to a person that used to read dictionaries from A to Z for the fun of it and learned the German orthography reform of 1996 by reading that dictionary with all the red corrections and why the words and the spelling was changed. <laughs> Maybe I should consider reading a Spanish dictionary once I have my transcripts polished. I don't know. It wouldn't hurt, right? <laughs> In case you did not know, I have dyslexic tendencies. I have not been diagnosed, but stumbled across that diagnosis because my daughter was diagnosed with dyslexia, and that is when a light bulb hit me that what she has is not hereditary, which I initially thought that she and I are so similar that we share some unfortunate traits. Having been told for decades that I was too stupid to understand or wasn't trying to learn or wasn't applying myself, so to speak, I turned to dictionaries as a source of information to get my eyes used to seeing words in a written form that were easy for me to read and not something on a blackboard with chalk, you know, back in the day I am dating myself. Still chalk blackboards. <laughs> anyway, with the words weirdly written from different teachers. Just in case you were wondering what would possess someone in their formative years to read dictionaries instead of soft romance novels. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> now, can I say the same when it comes to math? No, I cannot. That is too much to ask. Look, I know my numbers, but I feel math as opposed to being able to quickly do my times tables, etc, etc. 
It's like I can now see the numbers and get a feel for them, then do a photographic recollection of sorts in order to do what I have to do when it needs to be done. Let me tell you, when the age of calculators came about, the only one complaining was my dad. <laughs> it was a long time ago. And my first calculator was from Texas Instruments. <laughs> he was not pleased, I was thrilled. <laughs> Enough of that though. Speaking of the math ain't mathing, if you would like to support the Save the Patio situation, consider a donation towards that, not just by signing up to be a member, but if you would like to send a super thanks or a PayPal, the links are in the description as well as underneath this video, which applies for the super thanks. My PayPal link is in the description, but there is another link down there in the comments, which is my merch store. With the holiday season approaching, perhaps there are a few items there, orchid related of course, which may inspire you to pick something up and I get a little something from that purchase as well. I can also make items that are specific, for example if you like the Purpurata Bloom line but would like that on a different clothing item or on a pillow in a different color that I have not listed etc. Let me know and I can fix that for you as well. I have examples of puzzles in some orchid blooms but not all. However, I can make anything and everything into a puzzle if that is something you enjoy doing or someone you know would love to spend time with, after which it's completed then to hang it on the wall to enjoy. It's just a thought. It's been a while since I mentioned my merch store, so a lot of time has been spent in photography, cleaning images, and just to ensure that the things look nice while enhancing our orchid hobby with items that are not just trinkets or possible dust collectors. Another thing I have planned and started to implement is divide the patio into five zones which will be the daily target for grooming and tidying that space. Now that would make it sound like I have a huge patio. While it is a comfortable space everything just keeps getting bigger when the body starts to shut down and malfunction. So what I used to be able to zip through in a single day when it was patio grooming day now I can only do it in an hourly fashion before I have to stop because there is still the rest of the day to navigate before I can actually lie down. So the patio has been divided up into five zones and every day I dedicate time to that said zone. The hardest part for me is to then stop once that area is done. I don't know about you but my mental mind frame is such that once I am busy with something I prefer to just finish the job entirely, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> I now have to reprogram my brain to adopt new habits in order to achieve what I would like to achieve, all the while remembering that it is possible tomorrow I won't be able to target the next zone physically, so work may pile up before the end of the next week, etc, etc. But if I stop at the end of the zone for the day, chances are that the next day I will be able to work on the next zone, and so on and so forth. Eventually, the workload is not as rad because I'm doing every zone once a week. Now I started this a while ago to test how things would work and I'm getting better at stopping when I should even though I feel I could do more. But it's not just sweeping or trimming the hedge etc. I also have to consider can I take my patio debris to the garden debris tip area and usually after dealing with a zone the answer to that question is no. I cannot. The legs don't have it anymore. For me to stand an hour or an hour and a half and then also walk a bit with the garden debris to dispose of it, yeah that's just not feasible on a daily basis. Some days maybe, other days yeah, it's an emphatic no. So currently my summer guest does that for me when the container is full but he will be leaving in a week and I will have to learn to do that for myself for the coming seven months. Thankfully there will be less to dispose of the further we head into the winter months, so I'm grateful for that and I can learn what I can cope with and when too much is too much. I have also repurposed a mini indoor dolly to transport my debris container. This way I'm not carrying it and that has worked really well. 
Once upon a time, that little dolly was used to bring wine from the wine cellar into the house proper. <coughs> now it's being used for garden debris. My oh my, how times have changed. I'm not sure if I should laugh or, um, yeah, anyway, moving on swiftly. What else can I tell you? Are you still here? <laughs> if you are, thank you so much. I hope that a little sharing like this is not me oversharing, but know that if you're still here, then thank you for that support as well. And yes, I'm going to do hint, hint and nudge, nudge you for the hype points if you have any to spare. Any hype points that you have not allocated yet, I welcome them. I'm on the hunt every week to squirrel as many hype points as I possibly can. The last leaderboards have shown that the 10th ranked video has accumulated over 100,000 hype points. Um, yeah, uh, the most I have been able to get on a video, for which I'm grateful for, has been just under 20,000. So it would be great to see if I can't up that number at some point in time. And can you, would you? Thank you. <laughs> hype away. You know what I've noticed throughout the repot of these two orchids? There weren't any complications that I had not anticipated and had to deal with, so pretty straightforward as expected, which is great. However, these orchids have been in my collection since 2018 and have not really progressed very much. They are both not happy, generous root growers, but at least they are still with us. The Catlia Tenuis, I would love to have seen more progress with her, but she's always such a scale magnet. It's infuriating. Also, she objects to the cold temperatures during the winter, as is evident with now the Phyllosticta leaf spot fungus. It's a classic result of cold temperatures, low light levels, high humidity and inadequate airflow. I have several other Cattleyas with the remnants of this fungus because that is how they came out of the past winter, which I will be showing in the upcoming videos. But yeah, it looks like sooty mold. However, it's not because sooty mold can easily be wiped off and it doesn't leave anything behind, no marks or anything. And Phyllosticta does not show any surface texture the way you would see with sooty mold, but it just manifests the way it does to appear as if it is a mold. However, it is embedded in the cell structure. Eventually, if the scale damage doesn't take out the leaves, then the Phyllosticta will. If conditions do not improve in a timely manner, it causes the leaf to deteriorate way too fast and fall off prematurely. I have as yet to repot a Catliantha in the hopes of saving the orchid through the coming winter, and it lost many, many leaves because of this fungus. Anyway, I still have my Tenuis. I could get this cleaned up and repotted in time, so there's a little weight of my mind with this one. The rest is up to the winter conditions. How will they hold up? And me being able to hopefully stop the spread of this fungus during the upcoming conditions. I am glad, however, that I'm seeing a second growth on my Cattleya moon bells for the season. That is a first for this seedling. And well, we can mark that, check mark that as progress, maybe something. <laughs> You know what was the cool part for me in this video? I pretty much did everything in real time while chatting with you. How cool is that? I hope that you enjoyed listening to my ramblings and my little life update thoughts out loud. For what it's worth, while I was repotting, your company was greatly appreciated and your support, well, I am eternally grateful for that. The monetary support is currently only to bridge the gap if you can help please know that it is only while I'm waiting for the AdSense to help with the important bulk of my finances. This is not what I want to have to do for the duration of my channel existence. And I will let you know when that stage has been reached, where we can stop all this nonsense and any monetary financial support is willing and not, oh, please, can you help me situation? Because when that time comes, we are going to celebrate that together. Trust sharing the video, watching to the end, all that will move the channel in that direction. And thank you for all that you do. In the meantime, when it comes to the patio, it's going to take a village and you are being a part of that endeavor. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you also for watching. Stay fab, Eulers. But while you are busy doing just that, I do have a condition that you stay safe, please. Take care. Bye.